there is a moment that happens in life, a moment that may have happened to some of you already, but a moment that may not have and it possibly will happen soon. It isn't a pleasant moment, but it's a moment that you will never forget the first time it happens to you. And if you happen to wean yourself through this particular gauntlet, I assure you that you will not be good at it. It is a moment when you find yourself surrounded by people in a room, some friends, some strangers, and you suddenly realize, damn, I'm the only black man at this party. Now, if you find yourself that you don't present as black or a man, be my guest and drop your own noun in there. Damn, I'm the only whatever person at this party. Now, this will be a moment that will define you and a moment in which you will be defined by. But we all share a quality, each of us who play this particular role. Now, if you find yourself as the only whatever at a party, you might also find that your voice is the least listened to and heard. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that needs to change. No matter whatever or whoever you are or believe yourself to be, I am here to argue that the lonely whatever people of the world who find themselves in rooms filled with walls of sameness it's in this precise moment that they should speak the loudest and all of us should turn and listen. All of us should turn and listen. It is in our moments of otherness when our voices become the quietest that we must be heard the most. Our fear of otherness, which I refer to as identity phobia, does not just hurt individuals, but it prevents communities from forming. We often hear and get very familiar with this rally cry about that we all are the same, that you are no different than me and she is no different than him. But I'm here to say I disagree. We are not the same. And as I look around this room, even with the lights in my eyes, I can tell you that we are all not the same. And when we seek sameness only, we are the ones who are creating the cultural void. I believe that what you are is a big part of who you are, and you cannot hide from that. We must not fear identity, we must own it. We often use disability as a disease, like gender or sexuality, but I often say that homosexuality is not a disease, homophobia is. And when we take that opportunity to look at the labels that we give ourselves and those that others give us, we're able to see the world through other people's eyes. It's in these moments that we get to understand ourselves and we come to allow others to understand us. So what am I? What is my identity? I'm black, I'm gay, a leader, an organizer, an advocate, an activist. I am also an attorney, and a CEO, an author. I'm a marathoner. I'm a, a foodie. I'm also a bookworm. And you know, I'm also a husband. But equally, I'm also African American and Caribbean American. I'm independent and opinionated. I'm sociable. I'm messy. I'm frustrated. I'm an optimist. I'm diplomatic. And I'm also progressive. But I will speak loudly into every mic so that I could be understood clearly because I am the only me at this party and you are the only you at this party. So we must embrace those labels so that way we can create an opportunity for all of us to be diverse. I want you to think about what you are. What is your identity and how is it presented to the world? Take a moment and think about it. Have you defined who you are? Have you chosen a label or has one been applied to you? Is it positive? Is it hurtful? Is it honest? Does it describe where you're from or what you look like? If other people heard it, would they agree with you? If what you are is who you are, what does this label say about you? Or is there a truer label 
that you wish you could be able to identify? Well, I've been familiar with all of these questions because I've been there. And until I fully accepted and embraced all of the labels and hidden parts of myself, I've never been able to make a good choice. We all know that diversity is important. We've heard this word a thousand times. Politicians use it in order to win elections and some to lose it. Businesses use it in order to protect themselves. And schools use it in order for them to be more diverse. We are constantly striving for this place called diversity that we might not never reach because diversity is not about finding people, places who are different. It's not about others. I am diversity. You are diversity. We are diversity. And we must continue to embrace those labels because they are crucial to the communities that we're trying to build. Think about what makes you different than anybody else in this room. Maybe it's your height, your race. Maybe it's your passions or your dreams. Maybe it's your family. But you are the only you at this party. Now think about the things that make you similar. You're an audience, your students, your teachers, your parents, your friends, and your neighbors. As we discuss what makes us different and diversity, we must equally always talk about the things that make us the same. There is a saying in China that the lifted nail gets the hammer, which basically means that if you stick out long enough, somebody will put you in your place. Well, I feel different. I believe the lifted nail is the hammer and that you should have an opportunity to carve out a place in the world where your voice can be heard and you can show who and what you are. Take, for example, the international symbol of access, the ISA. This is a symbol which you might be familiar with of an individual sitting in a wheelchair, which we all have seen throughout the country. This symbol was created in 1968 by somebody in Sweden in order to showcase and raise awareness for people who were differently able. This symbol lasted for many years as the symbol of accessibility. But in 2011, a group of design activists started the Accessible Icon Project. And the reason being is there were some who thought that this symbol was helpful, while others thought it was limiting and hurtful. So they set out to do a design hack. And what they came up with was a symbol of a person leaning forward inside of a wheelchair, which is a position of activity. You see, the original symbol of a male and a female was standing, while the person in the wheelchair was just sitting. And I'm not sure if anyone in the room are familiar with people in wheelchairs, but they don't plan on sitting still. And that's the interesting part about labels. Some people will agree with them, while others do not. Nerd at one point was bad, and now nerd is good. And some nerds have now been elevated to geniuses at the Apple bar. We also know that queer at one point was an insult, but now it's a movement. That's the difference about what happens with labels. And that's my point, that when you own your label and your identity, you give it power. You have the opportunity to change someone's perspective and someone's opinion about who you are. I leave you with this. For many years, I've dealt with identity phobia. I was too afraid to accept the labels that will possibly belong to Charles. I was too scared to be out as a gay man. I was too afraid of failing. I was too afraid of being the only whatever person at the party. But now I understand that the only whatever people are probably the most important people at the party. I will leave you with these last few words. Be proud of who you are. Embrace all your uh, labels, both good and bad. 
reach out to that freak that's in the corner because you're also a freak. Be curious about the things that don't fit in while everything else around you fits in. And remember, I am diversity and you are diversity. Viva la difference. Thank you.